a Sergio Leone film starring Robert De Niro, Once Upon a Time in America. The story of friends. As boys, they made a pact to share their fortunes, their loves, and their lives. As men, they shared a dream to rise together from poverty to power, a dream they followed through two decades that changed the nation. They forged an empire built on greed, violence, and betrayal. It began as a dream. It grew to an empire. It ended as a mystery that refused to die. A D N. It's headphones nailed! guys and welcome back to another episode of headphones neil reviews i'm your host as always headphones neil bringing you my review for the 1984 film once upon a time in america directed by sergio leone so i finally made it through the entire over three and a half hour long movie um it's currently streaming on netflix in case you wanted to watch it um, my biggest hang-up in getting the, or in the delayed review of this movie is how slow and well-paced the movie is. Now you might wonder how a movie can be slow and well-paced, and once you watch this movie, it will make more sense. In that, um, if you read the trivia and watch the movie, you'll realize that when they originally released the film to theaters. They had trimmed the movie down to a little bit more than two hours and they had rearranged the, film, the sequence of the film to a chronological format rather than flashbacks and it was not very well received because of that. So when you watch the film, you'll realize that they do something that most modern films don't do and they include a lot of travel time between scenes. So when um, Robert De Niro's character Noodles and his friends are going from one place to another, they have a lot of shots that follow the characters, whether it's one character on their own or um, characters as a group. And they basically track all of that stuff and they develop each and every character to the furthest possible extent even to the point in this film where they have um, Noodles' friend Max end up dying in the like well I'm gonna say maybe halfway or three quarters of the way into the film but then returns at the end of the film as a powerful um, senator so or a powerful politician so all in all that's of among the few things that make it really really good and of course for me i'm kind of biased to films that do flashbacks but in this case it's progressed well in that we have de niro as noodles as an old man a retired gangster who had taken a lot of a long leave away from new york and then coming back and this film serving as a retrospective to um have show him reflecting on the his life his past uh, rise with his friends and on his own as far as becoming a prominent gangster in New York during the time of Prohibition. So that was all very well done and then of course like as you progress through the film you see his the relationship with his friends, the um, him trying to remain grounded and even with Max trying to take bigger and bigger scores or find bigger and bigger scores De Niro being the counter to Max as far as taking a more level approach to things and not and on one hand it's not really going out of his box as far as trying new things but then being that voice of reason with Max that their whatever his latest scores might be too much even though it might be bigger scores it's gonna it's kind of eating away at their soul um piece by piece so overall the film is very well done and of course in watching the film or reading the trivia for the film um leone had filmed from what they say in the trivia at least that it was a that there's six to ten hour film or there's six to ten hours of film and he had wanted to release this as a two-part film but it was turned down for whatever reason. I didn't see too much in the trivia as far as all that goes, but it would have been intriguing to see what other information had been um, presented or what 
they would have split up into this, those two films. I want to kind of say that it would have been more of Noodles as a gangster because it doesn't feel like they had enough of that in the film. Um, so in reading like the summary of the film, it, um, you see that or it's kind of hit Noodles' rise as a criminal gangster, bootlegger, um, assassin and that sort of stuff. And so there's very little of him being a godfather figure. So I think that's kind of where they would have gone with it. Um, maybe more time of his where he spent on vacation away from the rest of the group. More time in the um, smoking den where he was getting high and would reminisce and that sort of stuff. So I would I kind of wanted to see more of that. But this film on its own presents a good story as far as you know telling us that okay at this point like for example when max dies or quote unquote dies um is when he took that loss the hardest ultimately goes on his um get his binge of getting high to relieve his stress and pain and all that and then ultimately learning when he returns to new york that max is alive and he's become a powerful politician and ultimately rejecting that idea that this guy is max his friend max died many years ago so all in all a good film and does and like I said it is a slow film so when you're watching it in the beginning um, it does become it is kind of hard to watch just because of how slow paced it is but as they present all the various characters and stories and interactions between the characters like Noodles and his gang and his friends and then the girl at the shop who does her dancing um, and then later um, as far as bribing a politician ultimately getting bigger scores um, Noodles going off to jail and then getting out of jail and meeting up with his friends who have started their own uh, speakeasy so all of that stuff pieces together at by the end of the film very well and leaves that question in the mind of what story actually happened as far as what's to clear in Max's head or sorry in Noodles' head and what happened with his friend Max as far as becoming a politician and they're falling out did Max actually die or was it one of Max's ploys to get Noodles out of the gang to live his own life and then uh, Max can go do his own thing and take all the money and all of that and did he take all of the money even though um there's a scene with noodles walking away with the suitcase um does max ultimately come and steal it or does max hire someone to come steal it or anything like that so a lot of good questions are asked in the film and it's one of those things that goes back to what it have been answered if they had released a second part to once upon a time in america and how would it have been answered and all of that stuff so if I was to grade the movie, I would give it a grade of about a 90%. Um, just because in general, it was a good film. I did enjoy it. There's very little you could take out. And I guess if they wanted to shorten the film for um, theatrical release, I probably would have taken out all the scenes of people walking from place to place and panning shots and things like that. That would have probably reduced it from the three hours and like 45 minutes Maybe down to three hours, or well, not even 45 minutes, maybe like three hours and 15 minutes. Um, maybe, ultimately, maybe the bribing scene of the police officer could have been taken out. But there's very little that would could have been taken out. And of course, the biggest scene is the uh, rape sequence that they have later in the film when Noodles meets up with the girl that he was in love with as a kid, the girl who danced. Then the young girl was played by um, Jennifer Connelly. So all of that. So while that scene was hard to watch, things like that could, probably could have been cut just to avoid that kind of um, to see avoid seeing that. But also because at the end of the day, that scene probably doesn't necessarily pay off as much if you're rearranging the film, putting it in a different order, and cutting other scenes out. So. I, in the theatrical release, I don't know if that scene was in there to begin with, seeing as how I was only, I was not barely even born by that time. But for me, things like that. So for ultimately, I want to say if they if they ever do release the extended director's cut where they release the entire film, or they release like a um, second part where or they release it as Once Upon a Time extended reel or something where they release the rest of the footage i would i'm really curious to see what else they caught on film to um 
clear of like a lot of the story of what um noodles did as he got older after max's death and all of that stuff even the, so that's the kind of thing that bugs me is like is not being able to see all of that or kind of not necessarily having the time to view all of that because we're in a three hour 45 minute film and they spent all this time developing the characters so that's all there is for this particular review um so like I said, very little negative. It's just that I feel I, by the time they got to the end of the film, it actually left me wanting more, which is a good thing about the film. So for me, that's kind of why I give it a like an A minus. Just it was a really good film. It was worth um, making my way through it, especially after films like um, The Irishman, which are, which is just as long, and you kind of can see that inspiration that a director like Martin Scorsese could have drawn from Sergio Leone where they're kind of of that era of taking your time to develop characters thoroughly and creating those interactions and bases for characters to act the way they act. So if you were able to make it to the Irishman and you've never seen Once Upon a Time in America, then definitely give it a watch. Um, it is a good film. You will realize at the end of it that there's very little missing in the film, but it was probably it was filmed but never released theatrically which makes it a bummer so for me it kind of makes me wish that they or hope that they do release it at some point as a follow-up to the, once i'm on a time in america like a part two or bonus or some sort of review like that so that's all there is for this particular review so if you have any questions comments feedback or anything like that then you can find me on twitter at patel n01 the website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And of course, you can support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash pateln01 for an ad-free version of the show, um, get er getting early access to upcoming content, and what kind of content is coming up, and all of that good stuff. So that's all, of course, at uh, patreon.com slash pateln01. But thanks for tuning in to this particular episode, and until next time.